Back in 2020, Hyperscape completely changed the game on viewer streamer interactions because it was one of the few battle royales that actually dominated Twitch on release because viewers could dictate what happens to their favorite streamer in real time. So you had people like Myth putting it in the top five best BR games at the time. Ubisoft had an idea with Hyperscape that was so innovative, it could have completely taken over the market. But even with all that hype and AAA studio backing, the game would still run into some major problems and the features that made Hyperscape so successful at launch actually played a big part in driving people away. And obviously seeing your favorite battle royale game turn into a ghost town is a miserable experience, but it got so bad for Hyperscape at one point that even just queuing up for a game could easily take you over 20 minutes. So what exactly happened to Hyperscape that was supposed to bump heads with Fortnite and Warzone? Well to answer that, you have to understand that Hyperscape was not meant to be like all the other girls. It wasn't meant to be just another Fortnite copy like how a lot of battle royale games were trying to be at the time, because what made Hyperscape so different at the time was that it was trying to make itself to be a streamer game, so it was a battle royale where Twitch viewers could vote on what happens inside the game. You have game-changing events that happen in real time that could be anything from like revealing enemy locations to turning on low gravity, infinite ammo, you know, a lot of things. And sure, I mean, a lot of games these days, like Minecraft, come with plugins that let you, as the viewer, interact with the streamer's game. But remember that this was back in 2020 on a battle royale game. That was just completely unheard of at the time. So just pair that up with fast-paced gameplay and a vertical shooting system, and you had one of the most satisfying movement shooters out there. There. But this is where you could start seeing some of the bigger issues Hyperscape would be running into because the game's movement wasn't just fast. Some people argued it was a little too fast and it made hitting your opponents actually hard because on top of platforms on the map that just sent you flying upwards, you also had abilities in the game that you could pick up called hacks and some of these could be offensive, but a lot of those were actually movement abilities. So you had the ability to go like invisible, you had the ability to just fly upwards, but there was also one that put you in a bouncing ball and you could just literally bounce away from the fight. So there was a a lot of instances where you could just run away from the fight and reset your conditions if you got pinned between two opponents and some people were speculating that the game just had a little too many get out of jail free cards. So the game did have a high skill ceiling for you to master but the floor was also like extremely high and that made the game really unwelcoming for noobs. It was really hard for them to pick up and start enjoying it without just like getting immediately outplayed and Ubisoft themselves even stated that the game was a lot harder to play than they originally expected. Like it was too hard to aim, track, and consistently damage players and eliminate them, especially if you were playing on consoles. So while trying to make an innovative movement shooters for top streamers to play and enjoy, they also accidentally made a game that was not very casual friendly and it was really unwelcoming for new players. And just pair that up with a skill-based matchmaking system that was just way too loose, pairing up absolute aim demons with like your regular average Joe, and just some terrible weapon balancing on top of that. Like, my god, the sniper in this game was just absolutely busted. So in Hyperscape, you can carry around two weapons, and if you just happen to find the same copy of the weapon you're already carrying it, you can basically just upgrade your loadout. And that can mean either more damage, more bullets in your magazine, and the sniper in the game, the Protocol 5, once it was fully kitted out, it would have the ability to one-tap you at any given moment. And you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing because it's a sniper, but the worst thing about the Protocol 5 in Hyperscape is that yes, it has the ability to one-tap, but it's also a hit scan weapon. And hit scan weapons, the moment you click on your mouse, the bullet already hits, the damage is done. There's no travel time between you and the opponent, it's just like an immediate connection. So they just made the sniper in this game just absolutely broken. Like, don't ever put hit scan abilities on snipers. It doesn't make sense, please. So in terms of weapon balancing, you ran into the issue that some weapons were just crazy broken, like the sniper, and others were just kind of just outright useless. And because the game had a relatively high time to kill in combat versus like Warzone, for example, that just means that you need more damage in order to eliminate the opponent, that usually meant that the fights would just drag out and it would just turn into a game of cat and mouse, unless you were properly geared up to eliminate the opponents quickly. So the game was just outright punishing for new players to the point that they were just getting eliminated way too quickly before they even got the chance to learn how to play the game in the first place. So to fix that terrible onboarding process, Ubisoft actually had to introduce a respawn system into Hyperscape's main game mode, Crown Rush. Which by the way, Crown Rush, the battle royale mode, the way it worked is that you had, instead of like an encroaching circle that forces people to fight together, you had sectors on the map that just started shutting down. And once you only had one sector left, a crown would spawn on the map for you to grab. And whoever grabs the crown and holds on to it wins the game. And if you don't want to do that, you can just eliminate the rest of the players who are trying to get the crown. So there were two main win conditions in the game here. But you know what? Even with all those core gameplay issues that the game was struggling with and weapon balancing and terrible onboarding process for noobs, that still wasn't the worst thing that could have happened to Hyperscape.
You see, Hyperscape was marketed to be the next generation in Battle Royale games because they had the idea of merging the player viewer experience with their integration on Twitch. So anybody watching their favorite streamer could get involved. You know, you could vote on game events that could either help your streamer out or just grief them and or annoy them. You could basically play the game without having to play the game, which was the good part. And on release, I do remember seeing absolutely everybody playing this game. Even people who wouldn't typically play first person shooter games were playing on Hyperscape. So that's just how much of an impact Hyperscape had on the gaming industry on release. And I don't know if you guys recall, this game came out in August 2020. And during 2020, specifically during that time, we were kind of just forced to be inside a lot. So that obviously helped the fact that Twitch streaming was just blowing up in popularity because no one could leave their house. And by association, Hyperscape just had a massive amount of exposure at the time. And you know what? On paper, the idea of a game that appeals and involves the spectators sounds brilliant, you know, and it did have an initial big impact on Twitch, like I mentioned. But here's the main problem with that. You need streamers to be playing your game for that feature to even matter in the first place, right? And because the game was just so punishing for new players to pick up, especially streamers who were not really interested in being like professional FPS players, that alongside an even bigger issue that we'll talk about in a moment, didn't really help the Hyperscape community grow or retain a concurrent player base after their massive blow up on Twitch. So it was really fun for the viewers to watch Hyperscape, but it was not so fun for the players to actually play Hyperscape. And as more and more streamers started dropping the game to go play their regularly scheduled Fortnite, Apex, Warzone, Valorant, you know, all that stuff, Hyperscape was left without its one biggest marketing appeal that was supposed to make it not be like all the other girls. And the main problem with that is that once you took away all the bells and whistles that made Hyperscape so unique in the first place, you kind of start to realize that the rest of what the game had to offer was pretty was like surface level. Everything from what you would expect from a successful life service battle royale game either wasn't there or was just terribly implemented. Like for example, the game didn't have any medium to long term goals for people to go after, the battle passes were honestly just underwhelming, the rank gameplay didn't show up until like season two. So take away all those things and then you finally realize that the game doesn't really have anything for you to grind for. And on top of that, the updates and the seasonal content really just could not compete with how fast established BR games are just pumping out cool new stuff on the weekly basis. And the fact that there was no crossplay enabled really just meant that the lobby sizes were a big issue because sometimes you would have the match starting with like only seven players on it. You know, on a battle royale, only seven players, not good. Eventually they did manage to work out some of the weapon balancing issues and they even introduced new game modes, but you know, too little too late, unfortunately, because most of the player base had already left by then. And this is just going to be personal opinion, but I think that the microtransactions in Hyperscape were god awful. They were, they were not good. Like nothing about them really made me want to go like, hey, I want to spend money here, right? The microtransactions, the skins, the battle passes, maybe it's just the way the character models were designed or the aesthetics of the game, but I never felt FOMO at any given point playing Hyperscape. I never felt like I needed to spend money to be able to enjoy the game more. So a lot of the times I just saw people running around in vanilla skins. So I'm just going to assume that everyone just thought the same too. So Hyperscape right off the gate had a pretty strong start, right, with all the cool features that it introduced into the battle royale and streaming genre, and Ubisoft did have the right idea when it came to making a game that was just more than just Fortnite copy number 7. But once you got past the initial charm, you could easily start realizing that they focused a little too much on adding features on top of features, instead of having like a solid foundation for a good game that made players want to stick around, and eventually the Hyperscape servers shut down on April of 2022, less than two years after launch and the game had so much potential and it brought in so many cool elements into the FPS genre that other games eventually just decided to yoink and twist and implement into their own games. So Hyperscape did leave a little bit of a legacy there, but that just goes to show you that you just can't rely on cool features alone to keep people interested and you can't rely on streamers to be carrying your game. And you really have to give the player a good reason for them to want to keep playing your game. So you need that solid foundation of a good game before you start adding all the bells and whistles to it. And yeah, Hyperscape shutting down is obviously tragic like I mentioned, it's one of my favorite battle royale games that just does not exist anymore. But yeah, that's all I really want to talk about with you guys today. So thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.